A long time ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth. They lived, they hunted, they killed, and they ruled. Then the earth was struck by an asteroid about the size of Rhode Island, and they were wiped out. This allowed mammals to rise, and with mammals came human beings. However, what was the earth like before dinosaurs ruled, and what caused them to disappear? In this video, we're going to explore the strange creatures that ruled the Earth long before the dinosaurs took their first steps. We're going to meet giant insects and terrifying arthropods, as well as some of humanity's earliest relatives. Bronto Scorpio Before the age of reptiles, when dinosaurs ruled the Earth, it was the age of arthropods. Some arthropods still survive to this day, including spiders, lobsters, centipedes, shrimps, scorpions, and insects. However, in this prehistoric time before dinosaurs, these arthropods weren't as we know them today. No, they were gigantic. For instance, take a look at the Bronto Scorpio, which is what it sounds like, a giant scorpion. Modern scorpions are an average of just 4 inches or 11 centimeters long. But the Bronto Scorpio is 10 times bigger, at just over 3 feet or 1 meter. If you were to encounter one, they would have no trouble at all stinging you in the thigh, or maybe even your resting hands. They were so large that molting was difficult, requiring a trip to the water, where they spent a fair amount of their time. To survive the long trips in the water, the Bronto Scorpio not only had lungs, but also a set of gills. Because the scorpion could retreat to the land, it could avoid one of the only marine predators, such as the Pterygotus. Pterygotus. Although it lacks the venom that the Bronto Scorpio had, the Pterygotus was a sea scorpion so big that it could eat the Bronto Scorpio no problem. It measured in at nearly 10 feet or 3 meters, making it around the size of the present-day alligator. The Pterygotus weighed so much it wasn't able to actively hunt its prey but instead it hid in wait for the prey to approach. At the last minute, it would violently shoot its massive claws out and crush its food in its incredibly strong grip. No wonder the Bronto Scorpio hid on dry land. Unfortunately, dry land held its own group of predators lurking around in this prehistoric time. Giant Ants Just like you'll find all over present-day Earth, there were insects back then, too. Ants roamed the supercontinent. However, these ants were quite different than you're likely to see today. Before dinosaurs lived the biggest ants to ever have existed, each being over an inch long. It may not seem massive at first, but they lived in large colonies with swarms that devastated the prehistoric landscape. The colony's queen had wings and was comparable in size to a hummingbird. Paleontologists and other researchers theorize that these giant ants probably spit acid and only consumed fresh food, possibly having a diet consisting only of meat. If that was the case, they may have formed swarms to hunt and butchered much larger prehistoric animals. If you're not scared yet, just close your eyes and imagine thousands of hungry giant ants surrounding you, each one capable of spraying acid. Not a pretty picture. Meganeuropsis. Giant insects didn't just litter the ground, but they also flew through the skies. Take, for instance, the Meganeuropsis, which was the largest insect to ever live. It looked like a dragonfly, but multiple times bigger. With a wingspan of up to two and a half feet, it was similar in size to a falcon and was one of the most effective flying hunters ever known. It can catch prey 95% of the time, had an unparalleled brain, eye, and wing coordination. Although its main diet were other flying insects, the Meganeuropsis had the capability of hunting and eating creatures as large as dogs. Labyrinthodontia Even though the Earth at this time was dominated by arthropods and insects, we actually saw a sneak preview of the very first reptiles and amphibians. For instance, as some of the bony fish evolved, their fins turned into flippers which then became legs, which allowed them to transition out of the water and onto land. This early group of amphibians were known as labyrinthodontia, with very distinct teeth and thick, heavy skulls. These creatures actually looked quite similar to crocodiles in both size and appearance. 
These fearsome creatures would lurk in shallow waters, along the shores, just like amphibians today. They would lie in wait for creatures to get near, and would snap their powerful jaws around the prey. Due to its great size and strength, the Labyrinthodontia would take down and consume animals the size of cows. Arthropleura Some of the creatures of this time were much more strange and unique than crocodiles and dragonflies. There were some real nightmares creeping around the prehistoric Earth. For instance, millipedes are already creepy when they're just a few inches long. However, millipedes of this ancient era were 40 times bigger, making them six and a half feet long. That's just about the size of an average NBA player. This terrifying millipede was called Arthropleura, and the biggest on record was over eight feet long. This makes them the biggest invertebrates that have ever existed. When they were first discovered, no fossils of their mouths were recovered, which led to wild speculation as to the diet of the giant millipede. Because paleontologists have discovered fossilized plants in the guts of Arthropleura, we now believe these giant millipedes were probably herbivores that fed on plant life and had very few natural predators. Ancient Human Ancestors Ancient humans believed that life was capable of spontaneously generating. Modern science has dispelled that myth and discovered that all existing life comes from something else. For instance, dogs and foxes and wolves all descended from a common ancestor. Likewise, humans and apes share a common ancestor. It stands to reason that somewhere back in time of the dinosaurs, and time before the dinosaurs, there must have been some ancient human relatives. It's true, although the first mammal wouldn't be born until the age of the dinosaurs, and mammals wouldn't rule the Earth for another 250 million years, we did have some ancestors back then. Shortly after the first reptile evolved, it split into two distinct groups, sauropsids and synapsids. Sauropsids would later become dinosaurs, modern reptiles, and birds. Synapsids is the group that would become mammals, including primates and humans. So what were these synapsids? What did our ancient family look like? Dimetrodon and Gorgonopsid. One example of an ancient relative was the Dimetrodon. This animal was nearly 10 feet long, or 3 meters, and looks a lot how you'd imagine a dinosaur. Its skin is reptilian, and it even had a large crest like you'd see on a Stegosaurus or a Spinosaurus. However, this thing is actually one of the first synapsids, making him our distant cousin. Because Dimetrodon was cold-blooded, it gained all of the body heat from the environment. It would use the large sail-like crest to absorb additional sunlight. Probably the most familiar looking animal of this time was another early cousin to our ancestors, the terrifying Gorgonopsid. It looked like a mix between a reptile and a saber-toothed tiger. Its two-foot-long skull held a pair of long canine teeth. It was around the size of a modern tiger at between five to ten feet long. These early creatures didn't survive on insects like most other animals in this video. They instead ate other synapsids and other types of reptiles. Biodiversity Before the dinosaurs, the world was filled with massive, interesting, and dangerous creatures. Earth's Paleozoic era saw the most intense explosion of biodiversity ever recorded in the universe. The great size of the animals was due to the atmosphere having a higher oxygen content, which enabled tremendous growth across all animals. In addition to the creatures we've already talked about, there are hundreds of other notable creatures. The Dunkleosteus was an ancient fish with a thick skull that swam in waters, stretching up to 20 feet long. There was the Heliocorprion, an ancient shark that existed before the Megalodon with strange spiraled teeth. Even more deadly was the Hyneria, the world's first super predator. It was 8 to 12 feet long and could use their fins to make their way up on the shore in a very similar way to orcas. This allowed it to escape predators while also feeding. Although this era was filled with such amazing creatures, they're not around anymore. So what happened to it all? Where did these animals go? And what caused them to die out, handing the earth over to the dinosaurs? Meteor Strike The dinosaurs went extinct when an asteroid hit the earth 66 million years ago. But this wasn't the first time a whole group of animals went extinct at once. 
In fact, another extinction event led to the downfall of the arthropods and freed up the Earth for dinosaurs to take over. It happened 252 million years ago, and it was the greatest extinction event ever. Rather than an asteroid, there were at least three separate pulses or phases of extinction, and we're not really sure what caused each one. All we know is that over 90% of all living creatures were wiped out. The best theories about the end of this period are a mix of meteor strikes, volcanic eruptions, and global climate change. Without this triple threat of ecological disasters, we might still have giant centipedes, dragonflies, and ants crawling around the Earth today. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please share, like, and comment what your favorite part was. If you like the video, then make sure to click the subscribe button so you'll be the first to know when we release a new video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.